uh, I am here representing the, the Cement Importers and Trade Association. Okay, so what is your position in the Dakota? I'm the secretary of the organization. So we're here today um, as owners and operators and industry representatives of those who are importing cement into Gambia, but also exporting other goods into Senegal as well. Um, and so the reason we're here today is that the, the, the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Finance has raised the duty on the importation of cement. We used to pay $30 for bag of cement coming into Gambia by a road from Senegal. Now they're trying to raise it to $180. Now, if you're aware, the cement price, the selling price for cement right now is $375, $380. So if you, if you, if you have a duty that's $180, effectively, you want to put us out of business. Because no one is going to be able to bring cement with a cost of $320 and add $180 and then try to sell it for $380. So effectively, this move, this policy, is designed to block cement coming in from Senegal. And what's the reason behind that? It's very simple. The government claims the reason behind that is because they want to protect the domestic industry in Gambia. Now, the issue with that is that Gambia does not have a cement manufacturing industry. The industry that exists in Gambia is a bagging operation for the most part. Most of the operators in Gambia bring in cement via vessel while we bring in cement via the road. And then they bag the cement in their facility at different levels. Some do more to, to the finished product and others do less. And really we're here because, as you can see, there's over 500 trucks here today. And they can't cross in because no one can afford to pay the $180 per bag. Because there's no way you can sell that when you get into Gambia. There's broader economic implications that no one's talking about. For one, the government hasn't provided us with an economic impact assessment. If they block this trade today, there's at least 200 trucks moving into Gambia every day, bringing cement at $30,000. $30, and at $30,000, $6 million a day that they make in duties. If it stops today, how is the government going to offset that $6, $6 million a day? Where is that going to come from? What is the government's plan to recoup that lost revenue for the Gambian citizen? More broadly, the, the, the trucks that are going into Senegal, when they go into Senegal, they also bring goods that Gambians are bringing into Senegal. If the cement stops coming in, the truckers are not going to go back. And so how are those goods going to be transported into Senegal? That's another issue that we haven't resolved and the government hasn't told us their plans about. Really, really we're here today to just show our support to our drivers and to also all the operators and owners of trucks that are going back and forth into Senegal. Because the issue is broader than just bringing cement. The issue is also taking goods back into Senegal. And also the fuel we don't consume, how is the government going to deal with the lost revenue for the fuel stations in Gambia? That's also another issue that the government hasn't resolved yet. The shop owners that need the cement, that sell the cement, how are they going to live? And what are they going to do? And what about the workforce that's beyond just the drivers that are here today? How are they going to survive and how are they going to live? Okay. Okay. Now, the government has already increased from 30 to 180. Mm -hmm. So, as the organization, what do you want from the government as of now? Well, first, there are several problems. There was no notification of this price increase. It was just an overnight increase. We just showed up at the border. The price is now $180. So, there was, first of all, that was the first mistake that the government did. Secondly, while we're, while we're here today, what we want the government to know is we want to come back to at least the original price and then from back to $30. As my colleagues have mentioned, it was $5, then $8, then $30, and now $180. This is designed to basically kill the cement industry coming back into Senegal. So we need to go back to where we were and have a broader conversation because this is trade among African member states and ECOWAS member states. There should be free movement of people and goods between the two states. This thing shouldn't come between us. And we are highly dependent on Senegal and other goods. As you know, Senegal provides us a lot of electricity. Senegal provides us basalt and baton. Senegal provides us iron rods. Gambia needs to develop industries. And we will be the first people to tell you, yes, we need to develop industries. But the industry they're trying to protect is not a real industry. It's a bagging operation. And that's what, why we're here today. So we're, we're ready to work. You can see our trucks are loaded. We're here to cross into Gambia. We want to bring our cement in. And 
were just being prevented by by the by the duane here so it's up to the government whether or not the product and the supply comes to gambia if it doesn't come into gambia it's the gambians that's going to suffer we were just hearing today that the price just already went up from 375 to 385 here in uh, Parapanya. So that's what's going to happen. The price is going to continue to go up because you're removing an entire supply out of the um, out of the marketplace. So the price will continue to go up. The people will suffer. We will suffer, of course, but the people will suffer. Lastly, the last point we want to make is about supply chain security. You can't only have one supply chain, which is vessel. If you remember in COVID-19, all the vessels stopped. And it was only the truckers that were bringing anything into Gambia. All the food and all the cement and everything we needed was all done by road. So whenever there's a national emergency or international emergency, what are we going to do as a nation when we're only dependent on vessels? So we have to also diversify our supply chain in addition to protecting industry and letting fair market prosper. Since the government's increased this, while well, the government is suffering $6 million a day because it's not being paid, on the current duty, we're suffering, obviously, because there's at least 500 trucks sitting here today. On average, there's 200 across every day. There's 500 sitting here today. So all of us, no one's earned any income for over a week. Our drivers haven't earned any income. The laborers in Gambia who make at least $1,000 a day, which is in some cases more than some people in government make. So they're not earning anything. Their families are not getting fed. So the impact is broader than just us. It's all the industry we indirectly impact inside of Gambia. What would be your final message? That if the Gambia wants to prosper, yes, we must build industries. But we should, we should recognize what that means and realize what that means. That means we're building something to a finished product. And I will be the first person to support that. And I support that. And I would share any government that does that. Short of that, though, we should let the free market if everyone is importing some product, we should let the free market prevail. We shouldn't let someone who's operating their business inefficiently, who can't handle the competition, to go to the government to then impose additional tax to break the other industries.